So I guess we get started. Um, welcome everyone. Hope you're having a good day so far. Um, thank you for joining me today. The focus of this presentation is on GEOB Earth Retention Systems with a focus on our free GEOB MSC design software. A little about myself. I've been Chief Design Engineer with Presto for the last 14 years. Um, prior to joining Presto, I was an engineering consultant for 20 years, focusing on all different types of civil and geotechnical projects. I'm an active member on the REMA Rail Committees 1 and 5, also a member of ASTM D18 Soil and Rock and ASTM D35 Geosynthetics, um, also on the ISO Technical Committee Working Group 6, which focuses on geosynthetics. So we're going to be talking about the retaining walls today. Um, the geo system works for both main types of retaining walls, you know, whether it's a gravity wall or a reinforced wall. Um, we're going to do a real quick review of the wall types and discuss how they can benefit from the geo system. Then we're going to get into the, the uh, geo MSC wall software. I'm talking of what it can do and what the analysis shows. So by the end, you should have a good idea how you can use the software to help design your own wall projects. We'll also go over a couple of case studies um, using GEOB for gravity and reinforced walls. We'll start out today um, talking about the description of the GEOB soil stabilization system. Um, the GEOB system consists of two main attributes. The first is the cell size. The cells come in three different diameters, eight and a half, 10 and a half, and 18 inches, with cell heights ranging from three, four, six, eight, and 12 inches. So the dimensions depend on your project details and loading requirements. Um, for walls, basically, we focus with a six inch or eight inch um, deep cells. The ult ult ultrasonically welded C, where all the connecting points are, is very important to the function of a geocell. The stronger the seam strength, the better performance of the geocell, period. So the stronger the seam strength, the better the system performance. The material is constructed of 100% virgin HDP, which provides the strongest wall strength while painting, maintaining semi-ductile uh, properties. Too stiff of a cell wall leads to overstressing the seams and the potential for cell rupture. The second main attribute in GM system is the infill. Um, there are basically three main infill types that we can use depending on the type of protection that's needed. Um, with the Earth Retention System in the front fascia. Um, it can fill it with topsoil and vegetate it. Um, you can fill it with aggregate um, or even in some sy uh, systems where instances, I guess, where it's subjected to high flows and tractive forces, uh, we can actually fill the uh, front fascia with concrete. So, but no matter what infill is used in the front cell, we always use a free draining aggregate in the back cells to allow for drainage and to prevent pore pressure buildup. The after wall key is the main component of a completely <coughs> integrated system connecting each individual panel of geo into a single system. The wall key allows for fast, faster installation and the last lifetime of the project, ensuring that the wall is protected and that the geo system will not fail under anticipated loads. So the specific engineer values of the after wall key ensures the system holds up to loading over time without the corrosion seen in staples or the failure of under performing zip tie systems. In order for geostyle to perform uniformly, it is critical that both the factory welded internal seams and the field join junctions, the actual wall key, that connect the panels together perform at a level that is the same as the cell walls. So the three primary elements of any geostyle system, the cell walls, the internal junctions, which are the seams, and the actual wall key connectors must perform uniformly as a complete system. Therefore, any incremental improvement in one characteristic, for example, cell wall stiffening, is only valuable if the same improvement has been made in the other components. So, GEOB is manufactured, like I said, using a high density version HTP, HDPE blend. Our formulation has stood the test of time for more than 40 years. It contains no fillers, unstable polymer combinations, or exotic alloys. So now I have a quick discussion of the fundamentals of retaining walls. So walls are defined as structures with a batter of less than 20 degrees. Anything else is considered a steep, a steep slope and it's protected in a different manner. With walls, we think of project failure 
in the terms of bearing capacity, overturning, and sliding. So there's no limit in how tall we can go with geo retaining walls. The wall picture here is interesting, both to its varying, um, varying toe elevations, as well as its stability as a solution where the wall sits on a slope beneath the toe of the wall. Here you can see that same wall when fully vegetated. Please notice how the wall blends very nicely with the surroundings. The decision as to use a wall or a steep slope for a project really depends on your site topography um, and your soil properties. So majority of our walls are vegetated. Um, you know, vegetated walls, the advantage of those is that they um, include aesthetics and stormwater reduction. The vegetation can capture the stormwater runoff from hard pavements above or direct infiltration from rain emits and then integrate it quickly into the groundwater system or evaporate it um, through the plants. Now let's talk about gravity versus reinforced walls. Um, gravity walls do not require any type of geogrid or geosynthetic reinforcement. Eight feet is typically um, the maximum height for our geo walls, you know, pretty much just based on, on gravity, but these types of walls can be much taller if it's used to, against a stable you know, fascia, such as a weathered rock or a hard clay. You know, fascia gravity walls can be tricky to design. Um, so we do recommend you come to us if you have a project like that. Um, gravity walls and slopes are designed and built with geo panels having three to seven cells in depth. That's what I mean by cell depth. This is a four cell, and then you can see a three cell. Once again, no geosynthetic is used. The majority of our walls and slopes are reinforced um, using geosynthetics, like most typically with geogrids. The general pr principle of reinforcement are the same as with other types of geogrid walls, um, such as masonry walls. In most cases, a three cell wall panel is used, which is the smallest panel size we offer, since the geo is really only acting as a fascia. So these walls can require sometimes a lot of excavation in order to place the, uh, the geogrid tiebacks. And you can see typically we're using a uniaxial geogrid tieback in these walls. And the geogrid does have to come, this is just a picture, but they do come to the front face of the front face of the wall. So reinforced walls are not limited in height. It may still be beneficial to use multiple tiers of shorter height walls rather than a single wall, as you can see in this picture here. This is because the length of the reinforcement may become too great with a single tier. You know, typically the ratio of the wall height is about 70%. So a 10 foot high wall um, has about a, about a seven foot tie back. And a 100-foot tall wall would have a 70-foot tie back. So I guess you get the idea. But using shorter tiers allows you to keep the reinforcement like reasonable while still achieving the overall required height for the wall. <clears throat> With that, let's talk about why one would choose GeoWeb. Like I said, mostly aesthetics and, and cost and installation are the compelling reasons. You're going to see a tier to wall. Geo walls and slopes are aesthetically pleasing and environmentally friendly due to their maintenance, but their maintenance and their ability to capture stormwater running, runoff. Now, using local grasses and flowering vegetation will help ensure easy growth and a natural look. Installation of a geo wall system is fast. The materials are very lightweight, easy to assemble. Typically installed almost most a lot of times by landscape contractors. You know, they're very inexpensive. Um, compared to traditional walls, such as masonry or gave and block walls. Um, compared to many other wall systems, they have a lower carbon footprint for manufacturing and transportation. Uh, most of our walls, you don't need a lot of heavy equipment because everything is going to be hauled in. Panels are lightweight, um, just basically filling the, the panels, the aggregate, and whatever's desired in the front fascia. One of the most significant benefits of geo walls is relatively lightweight compared to concrete or gabion block walls, and also the ability to tolerate uh, differential settlement. So building over soft soils or areas where differential settlement is a concern is not a problem for geo, geo walls, and is suffering like, like, like I said, gabion block wall. Reasonable differential settlement is different for every project, but in general, geo walls can handle several inches of differential settlement, which is vital for areas with saturated soils. This is a project here in Rice Field over in Japan. Using the geo system can help avoid expensive and time-consuming act activities such as surcharge loadings, um, which is often required when differential settlement is a concern. The time required for the surcharge loading may be reduced or even eliminated when using a geo wall. It also reduces the amount of visual inspection 
maintenance and repair or a lifetime of the wall structure. Since what, what the geo ball panels can accommodate much more movement than a rigid or a masonry wall. Geo balls are the preferred solution when dealing with poor soils with significant sediment or even in seismic zones. Um, this is a reinforced uh, slow project. This was over in Japan. Um, seven years ago, they had a major earthquake and flooding. And you can see how on the right, this is before the earthquake. After the earthquake, you can see all the concrete down structures came up in rows and didn't go back, but the geo balls went right back into place. So you can just imagine how many failures of, of like concrete walls they had in Japan uh, during that earthquake. Resistance to chemicals, water, and the freeze saw cycle are additional benefits to using the system. Um, the walls pass water freely through the cell perforations of front fascia, limiting possible hydrostatic buildup. As we all understand, poor drainage is a major reason for many wall and slope failures. GEOB also reduces the potential for spalling and cracking. It is due to long-lasting HDP materials that make up the GEOB panels. Walls can be built in channels without the need for heavy loading um, of delivery vehicles. You know, GEOB panels are very light, as I mentioned, easy to install. And most of the wall projects are installed, like I said, by landscape contracts with use of, without the use of heavy equipment. Steep slide slopes of the channel can mean that the horizontal footprint Footprint, our footprint could be much smaller than if the slide, side slopes were, say, on a two to one. And here you can see a geo wall front face is filled with aggregate. It's a lot of hurricane channels actually down in Florida. Uh, this is a project in Houston, another hurricane channel. They use a reinforced slope at about a 45 degree angle. To ease the construction, so it's around pipe culverts, an important benefit. You know, there is no loss of structural integrity due to the infrastructure because of the continuous web connections. You know, the geo sections can be easily trimmed in the field to fit around that large culvert pipe. And we also hear from the workers in the field how easy it is to cut the panels. You know, basically you just cut it with a zip knife. Because panels really don't have much strength until they're actually filled up. So you just cut the panels and butt it up against the pipe. Typically a non-woven geotextile is placed um, around the wall here so you don't lose any materials from the back side of the wall. The flexibility of geo panels allows the walls to conform to the existing landscape. Here you can see it's easy to create curves, uh, start guardrails right at the edge of the top of the wall you know, to maximize the available space for the road infrastructure. So we do offer the free software <laughs> for designing the retaining walls and slopes. It's available on our website. It can be used to determine if the system is appropriate for your projects. The Geobasket Wall Software was developed by Doug Benora Lashinsky at Adam Engineering. It can be thought of as an extension of the popular Visa software. You don't need to have Visa installed or have used that software before to use GeoVMSE, but it can help. Um, the program is highly versatile and can model a range of site conditions. It can be used with both gravity and reinforced walls, actually also including reinforced slopes. The program performs both, both internal in external stability calculations. The software is completely free. Um, we do have annual updates every day or every year in December. Basically, a simple user interface that walks you through all the steps that need to be considered. You start by choosing between gravity and reinforced wall. And it's also very important with any type of wall system that you, hopefully you have available a geotechnical report for soil, soil properties for your site. The program is based on, I guess it's six inch or eight inch deep geo panels, which are the standard panel depths. Has a built-in library of uh, many geo grid manufacturers to choose from. So you can work with a product you're familiar with. There's some room for customization, but in general, there are set rules, uh, rules to be followed to achieve a proper design. And the software helps you along with that. So we do have a training guide and some simple video walkthroughs available on our website which you can help with basic questions about how the software is used. So the, pro the program is pretty simple. Once you use it a couple of times, it's fairly quick. You can actually design a wall and probably if you have all the information in less than five minutes. So it's a perfect op option for a wide range of projects. So the best way to teach it, I guess, is let's just go through a gravity and then we'll do a, a reinforced wall. 
So this case study is about the Hammond Coastal Trail in California. The slope between the roadway and the trail was badly eroded and needed to be shored up to allow for the safe use of the trail. Slope erosion, especially below the roads or areas where live loads was very common and building retaining wall was the great way to mitigate the problem for the long-term uh, success rather than doing many fixes year after year. So this is your basic, basically your starting screen. You've got all your standard icons, opening, saving, and printing. To get started, you click on the far left icon for the blank page for new. Our first question is whether we are designing a gravity or reinforced wall. In our case, we're working with a gravity wall. We can click on uh, gravity to get the input model. This is a list of all the data that the program needs to have in order to give us a result. It doesn't really matter what order you choose, um, as, long as, you ch as long as you get them all. So it's usually just easy to start at the top. You choose what inputs you want to work with. It defaults to English units, but metric work, uh, units are also available. We move on to our general information tab. Here's where you put in your project information as you want displayed on the final printout. The time and date auto populates here and you can be can be changed manual if needed. The other big one is the designer's name. If you don't put anything in this box, um, you do get an error message. That's one of the things that is required. You have to have a uh, uh, designer's name on it. So you just select OK and go back and fix that. This is the only box, like I said, is absolutely must be filled out. But it's nice to include all the other information. So you select OK in the bottom right when you're finished. Um, that is going to be the standard for all the tabs moving forward. So now we'll get into the, I guess, the meat of building out the, out the model. Um, the new third tab here for geometry, loadings, and other design inputs. Click on it, the new page opens up. So there are a lot of boxes that have auto-populated numbers in them. You can ignore those since they don't mean really anything um, at focus here which is a diagram showing what each variable represents in order to build up your model. The big one to know is are the horizontal lengths A and B at the crest. These are two that may be less intuitive than the other, like the wall height or slope angle. Here's another view of your project site. And you can use the help to define all of your geometry inputs. The slope angle or face base is labeled I and is whatever you need it to be for your site, usually the steeper the better, but we often see one to one or 45 degree for wall faces too. So you should have a lot of freedom with this value. The next value is beta, which indicates that there's a slope behind the wall face. If there's no slope, of course, this value is zero. We generally try to keep the slope relatively shallow. So think, you know, three to one to less, but you know, steep as possible if that slope is globally stable. So now we can move on to our horizontal crest distances. Um, the first is A, which is distance between the face of the wall and the area with the back slope, if there is a back slope. The area is always flat, and we recommend keeping a back slope at least three feet from the face of the wall to avoid potential sliding issues. Then we have an area B, uh, which is the length of the back slope. In most cases, it's at the edge of the road or on the right side of the photo. You know, sometimes you'll have a total slope, and it'll be warped. Um, below where the geo wall is installed, which is shown as alpha here. It's not always a feature of a geo wall. It can have a big effect on sliding and overturning failures. So don't forget uh, that value if you have it. So, okay, now that we have, um, know what all the variables are, we can enter those numbers in here, which I've done for this specific data. A couple points, the height of the wall needs to include an embedment depth. This embedment depth is the anchor point of the wall is typically, you know, typically about a one foot, but it does increase for taller walls. The only real way not to have this is to build a wall on a concrete slab. But other than that case, we still recommend some type of anchorage to prevent wall sliding. The wall is six feet tall, and we enter seven feet in our drop box to include the one foot of embedment depth. The other point about surcharge, um, Loading values, you can include a surcharge over areas A, B, and C, which is like I said, the area beyond the, uh, behind the wall. 
In this case, the area C includes the roads when surcharge load is used. And you can see where that load is placed in the diagram on the right. You can have all three loads at the same time or, or actually none at all. You don't need to add additional load for the soil on black uh, the back slope, only if there's load on top of the slope. So a lot of information. Um, hopefully you're able to follow along. Um, this is a screen that will appear once you hit OK on the geometry slide. Here is where you can make decisions about the geo panels themselves. The first is the number of steps along the height of the wall. This allows you to control the number of times the length of the panel changed, so you have a wider base and a narrow top, which is standard shape and, and of a gravity wall. The program will automatically try to have the least number of steps it can for simplicity's sake. Um, I actually recommend not really adjusting this number unless you have a specific need. There's another option we don't generally employ. It also allows you to control the length of the uh, or top layer of the geo wall so that you can have the traditional wall shape and then have, <clears throat> then have a extended top layer on top for protection. This may be useful if the wall is directly under a road and you need some extra protection to support vehicles. But as mentioned, I guess generally this box should just be left unchecked. This section lets you choose the size and depth of the geo, um, geo cells. Remember back in the beginning, uh, we mentioned three sizes and four depths. In terms of wall structures that live in the three sizes, so you got your small, your medium, and large, and your two depths, six and eight inches. Most walls um, will typically use a 30D, which is our mid size cell, um, six inches in depth. There are other cell sizes as depths available. Um, this size is probably the workhorse for us on most of our wall projects. Um, it provides the least expensive installation and most available uh, and ready size. If you want to use different um, size or cell depth, I recommend that you contact us. We can discuss the specific project in detail. Last is to choose on this slide is the minimum number of cells in the geo panel. Once again, this ranges from three, whoops. Oh, sorry. This ranges from three to seven cells. The program will generate a model um, with lengths that are required at the base. This is where you can decide how narrow the wall is at the top. Three cell panels are wall panels that are mostly sufficient for you know, the lower gravity walls. It's a good starting point to choose with. No matter if you start, if you click three cells, if it's not good enough, it will automatically uh, determine the number of cells that you need um, for a stable wall. Soils information is our next stop. I guess it is best if a geotechnical report or testing is done, so this could be the specific properties of your soil. But if not, you know, educated guess based on the soil, soil types will work also. Um, these so soil properties are internal angle friction, cohesion, and unit weight. There are three different soils, soil areas that we look at. Cell infill soil, so what is being put in the geo cells at the front of the wall. The retained soil, so all the um, soil behind the geo panels, including the back slope. And finally, the foundation soil, which is under the geo wall, which can be uh, backfilled into packing. This is obviously a simplest, uh, simplistic represent, representation of how geo behaves in the area. So keep that in mind as limitations of this program. And of course, soil doesn't um, have to mean topsoil, it can be gravel, uh, clay, bedrock, et cetera. So back to our case study, a little further along in the construction. Um, we have the cell infill going in directly into the geo panels. This goes in all the cells, no matter the length of the geo panel. Then we have our retained soil sorted behind the panels. Remember, this group includes the soil that is in the back slope areas. And finally, the foundation soil. In, in the case, the soil that makes up the total slope. So any soil that is under the, under the excavated and built area counts as foundation soil. We enter our data. And this case study makes it pretty easy since the same sandy soil was used everywhere. So all the properties are the same. So then you just basically hit OK. Design parameter tabs up next. Um, this is a pretty simple screen. You likely won't change the default, um, the default value. Say on that one, you can see the same. So the next one is on seismic parameters. 
Um, obviously, this tab is only applies to areas subjected to earthquakes. Uh, you don't hear a lot about where earthquakes in the Midwest, but if you're along the Pacific Ocean where this uh, in California, where this project um, happened, it's a pretty big concern. So to determine what the peak ground acceleration is for your area, our case study takes place in Southern California. So the PGA is quite high. You know, depending on local re regulations, you can also have a vertical seismic coefficient that must be addressed. Um, this is a function of the horizontal coefficient and needs to take gravity into account. So know your project area requirements and you should be good to go. Um, so just reference the seismic charts for your area. Next, we go to the geo design data. You know, I'm working all the way down the list. This slide looks, should look familiar, at least I hope so. Um, we saw it pop up after entering the geo um, geometry for the for the wall. This is an easier way to get into this page if you want to adjust something. Um, still, the most important thing on this page is the minimum number of cells per panel and the cell size. You know, if your results are what you're looking for, this is one of the easiest changes to make. So I met, like I said, I before I recommend starting with three cells. And when you run your program, it'll tell you if three cells is adequate. Uh, if not, you can just reset rerun the program by selecting a different number of cells. So you hit OK, and we'll move on to our general factor of safety. This slide gives you some information, but not a lot of freedom. So this one, you can't really change the factor of safety without adjusting phase geometry. Note one on this one states that wall face is greater than 70 degrees. Use a factor of safety of 1.5, and wall uh, face is less than 70 degrees. Decrease that, uh, decrease that factor of safety to 1.3. Our case study has a slope angle of 60 degrees, so 1.3 was used. The only option you have here um, for a reduction is due to, the, due to the seismic factors. If you check either box, you know, this factor of safety is reduced to 1.1, you know, as, as mentioned in note number two. Generally, um, I like to leave these unchecked, even when I have a relatively high seismic coefficient, or an added factor of safety during the analysis, analysis. So that's what I've done for this project. But you know, as with anything, follow your you know your best engineering judgment um, during your designs. So now I'll hop over to the left side of the menu um, and look at the foundation effects. And this is where you can ask the analysis to count for uh, deep seated failures. If you're interested, um, this is especially helpful um, if you know your foundation cells are weak. You have significant water movement through the cell where heavy surcharge loads are being applied. The program uses Bishop's analysis for deep sea failures, and you can choose what factor of safety you're looking for. And in the end, um, decide if you want to run global stability, uh, global stability analysis. You know, it's up to your best design judgment, once again, whether you think you need uh, this information in your project. Um, but it's always nice to know you have that option and it's very easy program to run, so I, I would tip, I recommend it that you run it on a number of all projects. And this takes us to the last tab in the menu, which gives you the option to create a CSI specification. So the CSI specification will be specific to your project. Um, you can always, it comes in a Word document. Um, you can always uh, use basically fill out a couple of questions. This tab brings you to the online spec maker tool. You can create the spec. Like I said, here it'll show um, formatted formatted Word document. You can change it to whatever, whatever format you have. This, like I said, this does follow the CSI. You don't have to create um, the CSI spec now. You can go to the main menu at any time and create a CSI specification. So we're through the whole list. So we'll turn to the main menu. Um, so we're back on the main menu screen where we started, but now the model um, on the right is based on our data, we're ready to run the analysis. You want to calculate the geo layout to determine what is needed to create a successful gravity wall. To get this pop-up that is saying the program is looking for the baseline, um, which is the key to prevent movement and failure of the wall. When the OK button is ready, just go ahead and click it to finish off the analysis. Now the bottom two tabs on the main screen are active up here. And these will show us our results. So we'll start with the layout configuration. A new screen pops up to show our results. Your panels are not shown in the, in the model. 
uh, are shown in the model for full height of the wall plus the embedment depth. And you can see how many different uh, wall panels are used. You can see at three steps worth of panels, starting with six cell panels along the base of the wall, moving to four in the middle, and finally three cells at the top. If you remember to back to the design data page, you can change the number of steps if you want less, but the program is always going to try to minimize it for you if it can. And you can choose the number of cells on a panel. Uh, we had chosen three cells, which you can see in the top half of the wall. If we had cho chosen four cell wall panels, it would have continued the step, second step all the way up the top of the wall with four cells at the top. It's something you can play around with um, easy enough. While the smaller wall panels might be less expensive, it can sometimes be a benefit to have fewer different panels to avoid complications at a job site. If you click this button um, along the bottom, the failure wedges are shown. You can see all the surcharge load from the road influence of the direct sliding wedge. In the end, this is a wall that the program has determined meets all required factors of safety. So just let's hit the return button and take a look at the next set of results. A new screen pops up to show our results. Um, so based on the main page, you can look at the tabulated results. You know, we have two different supplements again. Here's a detailed. This expandable list for each layer telling you how long the layer is and how many cells. You also get the total area of the geo wall at the bottom. So you have a sense of how much space it is will take up in the ground. Our other options look at direct sliding and deep seated failures. Checking to confirm and meet our factor of safety for our failure modes. We have a direct sliding and overturning failures. We saw those displayed in our layout view. The program doesn't give the exact factor of safety, calculated only that is greater than the specified. Not the most helpful display, I guess, in my opinion, but you must take it as a, one of the limitations of the software. We also get the status of the failure mode in a quick OK or not OK view for, uh, for convenience. And finally, you can see some data on the bearing capacity, including the Q available. There we have it, uh, Geo Wall. The design analysis is all done. And we show that it meets our standards, factors of safety and durability. Now, all that's left to do is print out the report. Printing it to a PDF is your best option, though you have some other choices if you want them. And this is the report that you get after all your hard work. We'll spin it through quickly. This is a basic material specification for your geo panels. Um, we have more extensive specifications if available. Here is your geometry and surcharge data, plus a left rendering of the gravity wall model. Here are two more of the inputs, including the soils data, which was pretty easy since the soil was all the same. Other inputs as well. Here we move the results of the analysis. This should be everything that we saw when we looked at the tabulated results. So nothing we don't already know. Finally, a list of the uh, cell distribution. We see our steps or clusters they are called. And when we see the six, four, and three cell depth panels or uh, length panels are shown in the results mode. And that's really all there is for it for gravity wall. You know, pretty easy. I mean, it will with anything becomes easier the more you work in the program that's for sure and i went through it somewhat quickly but it can be easy to miss some things but it's nice to see that our simple program can turn um, this area and provide a nice gravity wall so let's look at one more case study we'll do a reinforced wall along a creek um, this is a project we did actually <clears throat> excuse me in northern wisconsin um, the slope was below a roadway that was eroding into a creek bed. It was undermining the road and following the creek. So a retaining wall was required to support the road traffic. Close to the edge of the wall, and they retain the soil to prevent movement and erosion. So we'll start a new model uh, by hitting the new in the upper left-hand corner. And once again, you're seeing the main menu a specific generic product or the gener generic model view. This time, we're going to make sure we have the rein, um, reinforce cell button checked. And then we'll get to modifying the input data, same as we did before. So this menu should look familiar. It's the same as we saw before. Some of the uh, more internal options have changed. But for now, we are just 
going to go down the list, starting with choosing the appropriate units for this project, adding our project information, remembering that adding a designer's name is required to proceed. And then we'll get right into the meat of the design with our geometry and loading requirements. This same model space is before us here. Again, with auto-populated values, we can ignore. The explanation diagram is here. It hasn't changed either. Uh, we're still looking at the same basic geometry of the walls and the shelving area. Here's the project um, with workers down in the excavated area. And you can see the creek bed at the top of the photo. And the person taking the photo is standing on the road above the wall area. And the wall face is here. You can't see it from the photo, but it's a steep angle, about 76 degrees. For this project, the horizontal area is all the way back to the road, so there's no back slope. This is a key difference between gravity and retained soil walls. For retained soil walls, the area will need to be longer because where the geosynthetics are placed. And you can see the geogrids in this photo. And if our road is where we are standing, it continues. Area B is the width of the road. And then because it's a road, you can assume, assume, it, assume it's a flat area, um, so no, no back slope. Because there's a creek bed right below the wall, um, there's no uh, toe slope here either. We come back to our model and enter our values. Remember to have your embedment depth and add that depth to overall height of the wall. Our whole horizontal area is quite long because of the geogrid placement. As I've mentioned, whoops, as I've mentioned uh, many times before, you know that that back slope um, or the back tie is about 75, about 70% 70 of the wall height. So hit return in the bottom, and now here's our first real difference we see. This is a different screen. Um, it does have some of the same options to pick from. You can choose a GW30B6, that's our medium sized cell. Um, six inches deep, and then choose our minimum number of cells. With retained soil walls, we almost always choose three cell panels because the strength of the wall is coming from the reinforcement with the geo backing is only the fascia. So we don't really don't need that, that deep of a geo section at the front. <clears throat> and here is the big difference. This is a list of all the preloaded geosynthetics in the program. There's a, a pretty extensive list, um, really. This is a list of all the different manufacturers that are available to choose from. Each manufacturer has a range of geogrid strengths to be used as needed. You can see the geogrids being placed in our project here. When the geogrids are placed uh, between layers of the geo panels as close to the front wall as possible without exposing the ends. They are laid as flat as possible for their full length out behind the walls. The ultimate strength of the reinforcement is here and starts off with the weakest. Um, and then gets quite strong. So you could, should be able to find one that works for you. You usually want to stick with the weakest grids. Um, that will do the jobs to keep the costs. So start always by selecting the lowest. Like here, uh, we selected a Mirify 2XT. Um, um, and then if it's not big enough, the program will tell you, which I'll show you later, it's not adequate enough. So you can go back and uh, change the gene grid. Next are a set of reduction factors for each geogrid. These are determined by the, uh, by the manufacturer and can't be changed. So are more of an FY than anything. Finally, the boxes where you choose which geogrids you want to include in your analysis. Like I said, you generally want to start out with the weak grids and move up from there. You can't choose more than one grid at a time if you need to, which may happen um, if one or type is too weak to do the job. You see us click the space between the regular layers is up to you and the program won't stop you from having large spacings. But you know, the larger the spacing, um, the less effective the grid becomes. We typically recommend placing um layers every four layers, which is every two feet. You can choose on where to start placing the geogrids here. You put one geogrid layer at the bottom and move up from there. Here you can choose the minimum lengths, your top and bottom geo layers. This was an option for the gravity walls. Um, also, um, you're not going to choose a minimum length. We'll just let the program decide if that's appropriate. Hit the return button and we can move on to the next steps. So, inspiration, once again, is the same. Um, again, specific geotechnical data is the best. So, you can have an accurate look at what is happening in the ground. 
Same soil property inside here, again, limited to just three soil areas. Cell infill soil, so it's being put in geo cells at the front of the wall. It's okay to have more types of soil in your site. It just means you'll need to group them together and assume a set of values that would cover all different values. It can be tricky at complex sites, but usually three group off, um, three groupings is sufficient. So back to our case study area, our workers have started filling in the exit area with soil. Um, the cell infill is basically a mixture of topsoil and aggregate. The topsoil allows for uh, grass growth with a nice final look of the wall. The aggregates um, help keep the soil drainable and provide a little bit of stability. A retained soil is just putting back the excavated material, which can be a good way to save on material costs if the existing soil is workable. So we enter our data. You know, the limitation of this program is the lack of any water input. We know that the foundation soil is desaturated. And the client is concerned about hydrostatic buildup behind the wall. Um, those are things we need to know as we're designing, but they can't be added to this model. They need to be included in construction in a different way. So very important to know this and keep that in mind. Design parameters tab is next. This is like the gravity wall, where if you haven't done extensive uh, geotech testing, probably won't end up changing from the default value in this slide. The inclination wedge, again, is 20 degrees based on you know, good engineering assumptions and the direct slide analysis. Once again, seismic parameters, the next on the list. Um, this project's in northern Wisconsin, so no earthquakes there. So we just keep it simple and go on to the next parameter. Once again, the G of design data is the next tab down. This is going to be the repeat once again, of uh, the cell size and cell depth, just giving you, once again, the same as in a gravity, a quicker way to access this information if needed. Remember that choosing number of cells in the panel can happen here, and changing our choices for geogrids is also on this page. So once again, nothing. And once again, we just want to remind you that with the reinforced walls, typically we're always going to start with three cells in depth. So general factors of safety is the next tab, allowing us to choose how conservative we want to be. Um, simple slide, not many options. One, one item we can change is the factor of safety and the shear strength of the soil. Note that it defaults to use a factor of safety of one. This has to be uh, has to, has to do with note one. You know, basically in the you know basically in the USB design around two main methods for reinforced soil wall, uh, soil walls, um, ashto and FHWA, and they recommend different, different factors of safety. I like to use 1.3, it's a bit more conservative, it will give a more robust uh, design. Reductions for seismic, seismic events is also an option. Because there are no seismic concerns for this project, uh, we just leave the box unchecked, and hit OK and move on. Over and left, um, again, is the foundation effects tab. This gives us the same ability to run a Bishop's analysis that we saw in the previous gravity case study. We can see what depth the analysis considers and can choose the factor of safety that is appropriate. And finally, choose if the analysis runs the Bishop method at all. Again, consider your specific project needs and run this analysis um, if needed. Um, deep seated failures are not a concern um, on this one, so we did skip it, but once again, I do recommend that you run the, uh, the method. And we've gotten through everything, so it's already getting, it's be, uh, getting pretty easy to fill it out. So back on the main screen, we see our model in place, and we're ready to run the analysis. We choose its first option. Um, the second option is available, unless you manually place each geogrid layer at the height you want and the length you want. But like I said, it's time consuming, probably won't do better than the program can, so we'll let the program decide optimal lengths of our grids. So here you basically click there, pop-up comes up telling you it's running, when the OK button becomes active, you can finish running analysis, it comes back to the main screen, our results tab are now active, we'll look at the layout option first. We have our model, rendered here, same as we remember from the previous case study. The geopanels are placed for full height, including embedment, and we have our geogrid layers extending back behind the wall. 
The length of geograms is also shown, but we have a problem. The program has realized that some of the reinforcement layers are overstressed and may fail. You can see that up on top in the upper left portion of that shot. So since he was happening, we uh, can look at um, look at the list of the numbers, which represents the different geogrid layers. If we select number two, we get a snapshot of what is happening with this layer. Also note that the first layer is on the bottom wall, which can be confusing at first. What we see is that the actual factor of safety is 1.18. Not bad, but you know we specify that minimum factor of safety 1.3. So we need to go back to our inputs and change something to fix this issue. <clears throat> So you click on the return button in the bottom corner, and we are back on the main screen where you can choose to modify the input data. Assuming we don't have control for changing our wall geometry or soils at the site, our next option for changing something is with the geo panels and the reinforcement. And that's under that geo design tab. And we saw in our model that the geo layer two is overstressed. So it isn't strong enough to support the anticipated structure. So the easiest thing to do is choose a stronger geo grid. So here, just select the next strongest geogrid in the list. I didn't unselect the original weaker grid. This will allow the program to use both types of grids as necessary. Um, you can do this or can switch the whole structure to a stronger grid um, to make it for simplicity's sake, which is highly recommended. That's all the changes we're going to make. So let's go back to the main screen and run the analysis. When the analysis is finished, we'll look at the layout again. It looks like the same model, but with no error message in the corner. So our geogrid selection by increasing it fixed that issue. So let's check layer two again and see what happened. The actual factor of safety is now greater than our required 1.3, which is great. Um, this layer is now using the Mir Mirify 3XT, um, which is a stronger option. If we compare that with layer three, we can see the difference and we're still meeting our 1.3 factor of safety, but they're doing it with a weaker grid. So we see the program using both types of geogrids it is going to default to the weaker um, grid when it can. Um, those are the important things to see, see here. But for construction ease and simplicity, I would just go with um, three, three, like a 3XT for all of your wall, um, just so it's easier to construct in a field and not, the contractor is not getting confused. We can take a look at the tabbing results for a full picture. Um, three options this time. We'll start with the summary of the reinforcement results. This list tells us the potential mode of failure for each layer, either compound or tieback. We also see the type of geogrid used in a layer. Uh, looks like the only layer that needed a stronger grid, and our factors of safety are here. Everything is over the required factor of 1.3. Um, our next option is to look at the detailed results for reinforcement. This detailed information helps you determine the total length each geogrid layer required to resist failure. And again, details the mode of failure in each layer. In general, even though each geogrid has a specific total length needed, it's easier just to take the longest length and apply it to all layers for ease of construction. It's important once again to remember that the grid has a 70% tieback requirement. You'll take the longer of the two values, total length here, or the 70% value. Our last option was just look at stability for the wall. We have direct sliding and tieback plus compound failure modes. And again, a quick and simple OK status letting, letting us know the required factor of safety seven yet. So we're done with our second analysis. Let's print the report, take a look. It looks like, again, a PDF is probably the best option. Same material specification for the geo panel is attached with the summary of our wall geometry and surcharge, plus our results rendering of the model. Soil properties and other input data are collected here as well. Our first results page looking a lot like the screen we saw in the tabulated results with the menu. Our reinforcement failure modes here. And again, our two types of geogrids over here. So don't want to mess this up. Using multiple types of geogrids just to keep it straight in the event. Here are the details for the reinforcement. The require, required tieback strength. This is the value that decides whether the geogrid layer is strong enough. And we do see that layer two has a high strength value. Here are the stability results, making this a good page to share with um, others that don't need the details, and then finally a summary. And here is the here the wall is complete. It was installed in the fall of 2020. Um, 
picture on your right was taken about a month after construction. So you see the vegetation is coming in nice. It's the creek, like I said, if water does flow, it rises and flow freely through the front fascia and also through the geo um, drainage system. So one last thing I'll make clear before we're done with limitation of this software. And I touched br briefly on these as we've gone along. The first is that there are only three different soil properties that can be modeled. So if you're anticipating a lot of different types of materials at your site, we need to move on to a more advanced software, such as RESA or ReSlope. Um, second is that the gravity walls are limited to a maximum of eight feet in using GeoMSC. If you need a fascia covering or determine use a gravity wall for a taller project, um, we need to dig deeper to get you know, the best analysis. If you are anticipating a complex wall design, this program may may not be sufficient. Lastly, but most importantly, the program cannot simulate water flow. It is simply not an option. So for most walls, this isn't a deal breaker because you're always using free draining material in the construction. You also need to install a drainage system, such as a perforated pipe, like in this photo, that will collect and move the water without damaging the wall. If you're running into any of these issues for your project, we have more advanced software that we can use to model your project. Um, but it's always important to know these limitations of any software um, before you tend to use it. So we made it through the presentation on gravity and reinforced walls. Um, the GO3 um, system has great flexibility of design. A variety of design infills can be used in the front fascia to meet your project needs. You can fill it with topsoil, you vegetate it. Uh, you can use aggregate or concrete in areas subjected to high flows or high other types of forces. Both gravity and reinforced, uh, reinforced soil walls can be modeled with our free, easy to use software. We do provide a complete system for all of our projects if we do the design, including the actual wall uh, key connectors, which connects the geo panels together. You know, if you want us to provide, we do provide free design evaluations, includes a written summary, um, calculations, drawings and specifications. Um, we provide the evaluation for any type of wall, no matter the size, whether it's a 100, foot, 100 foot square foot wall or a million square feet. So please reach out to us if you're interested in an evaluation. Typical turnaround time is usually a couple of days. And if we don't have all the information, information we need, um, we'll reach out to discuss it. So here, as I mentioned before, we do provide the free project evaluations. Um, you basically just go to our website, and you click on request for free project evaluation here, and this form pops up. It's just um, go right through the form. Uh, it'll let you attach, you know, PDFs if you have um, sales reports or anything else. You can also access that. To get our copy of our GMS MSC software, you can just go to our website. It's easy to request a license. It's good, like I mentioned before, it goes on a year by year basis. So every December, uh, we send out, we get, we update our program, and we need to get to get you in password. Or not a password, we get you a new update. So every January or January or late December, you want to request to send up send me an email requesting the new software and I'll send it over to you. So one of the biggest questions we get about cost, no surprise, especially if this is new technology for you um, compared to other stabilization techniques. So here we have a basic comparison for GEO uh, for a low support application. In this case, you know, it's a gravel road. Comparison shows the difference in both price, cross section, and depth. For aggregate only, un aggregate, um, only unreforced section, section using geogrids and geotextiles, and then two sections showing use of geo system, one with aggregate, one with salvaged on site materials. You can see the geo system is both thinner and less expensive. And the other message um, typically on site material can be utilized. In fact, a 40% savings can be realized compared to. The geo and geotextile section, which does not allow for the use of you know, salvage or low quality on site material, the high friction angle materials for the grids and geotextiles. Of course, your aggregate cost, distance to the quarries may vary, but still give you basically a general idea of the savings that can be achieved using geo. When it comes to geo walls, um, the good thing about using geo walls is that typically they're installed by landscape contractors. A lot of our walls, um, like I said, you get without heavy material. Um, unlike with gabions and concrete block walls, you need a lot of heavy equipment to install those walls. 
So we made it faster and easier for you to obtain your PDH certificates. With our webinar dashboard, you can easily view our library of webinars and download PDH certificates for on-demand webinars um, that you've completed. Um, your webinar dashboard will keep a record of all the on-demand webinars completed, along with the PDH is earned. Please note that the certificates for live webinars are managed separately from the on-demand webinar dashboard, so you won't find your certificate from today, but you will receive an email from GoToWebinar within the next couple hours containing a downloadable link to obtain your PDA certificate. In two or three days, you'll also receive a separate email from Presto um, with more detailed information about accessing the on-demand webinar dashboard, um, also with other helpful resources. If you do not receive either of the previously mentioned emails, uh, please check your spam folder. And that's the presentation. I want to thank you very much for attending. Um, you know, you can go to our, just want to mention our web, our, our webinar, our website, prestogeo.com has a ton of information, um, tutorials, software. Um, so please visit our website. So with that, we've got some time, I guess we can take, see if there's any questions. First one is, can you mention the pros and cons comparing GUB and GABA and wall applications? Well, the biggest one is price and the ease of installation. You know, with the, uh, you know, with the GUB walls, like I mentioned before, it's usually done by landscape contractors without heavy equipment. So you can, those walls go in very quick. Um, I know a lot of contractors, uh, when they look at a GABA wall as a V, uh, VAE for a geo ball. Um, the geo balls are typically significantly less expensive and easier, easier to install. And they also give you a better look if you use a vegetated solution. Is there any data or sports case that is using your system, your sports field in terms of safety? Um, we have installed these walls all over the world of all different types of installations. We have a bunch of case studies on our website. Um, if you want to get some specific case studies, um, just reach out and we can hook you up with some specific case studies. You have a cost schedule. Um, cost schedule is all depending on, you know, because we have so many different types of walls we can use. You know, we can use our mid-sized cell, you know, with a six or eight inch deep. We can use our bigger size 40V, which is about 18 inches in diameter um, with a six and eight inch depth. Um, we also make a 12 inch wall, but um, a 12 inch deep section, but we don't usually recommend that because for walls because it's hard to get adequate compaction inside of that wall. The best way to get a cost um, for our walls is if you have a project, you know, we do that free project evaluation. Um, it doesn't cost you anything, so just submit the information. Um, we'll actually provide that evaluation in a couple of days, and then we'll um, hook you up with our local uh, distributor in your, in your territory of where the wall is gonna be built, and they can actually give you a cost of the wall and they've also our distributors have a really good network of contractors that they worked with over over the years so they can probably hook you up with a contractor too that can give you install co a cost of the wall um how clean is the aggregate is it wash remove any fines such as soap and clay if so how many times should be lost so typically what i recommend for the area behind the wall you, know, you want to have that free draining so we try to limit the fines to 10 percent so to limit those fines to a 10%, usually you can get an open grade A aggregate, you know, usually um, from, you know, a quarry or something around your job site. Uh, can I get a copy of this presentation? Yes, this will actually be on our website. So this um, presentation will go on the, uh, um, will go on to our website. So you can actually go on there and take a look at the presentation. Adjacent panels connecting vertically to each other. No, they're not. Um, whether it's a gravity wall or a reinforced wall, the weight of the system is just adequate. Um, and the lockup between the geo for a reinforced wall and the geo grid, like I mentioned in the presentation a couple of times, the, the geo is just a fascia. So it's just relying on the geo grid for the reinforcement and the stability wall and the geo web. Um, has your and the geo is just acting as, as the weight, and there's no connection to that geo grid either. Okay. 
Uh, any projects in Africa, South Africa? Yes, we've done projects all over the world. Does the software consider overall slope stability? Uh, yes, it does. So it actually does overall um, internal and external stability. Geogrid does not overlap the stuff right behind the facing. No, so the geo, geogrid goes from the front face of the wall all the way back into the reinforced zone. And that is based on the, uh, the calculations. So in the second design example, if you go with all three XT grid as opposed to some two XT grid, can you put that back in the program and see? Yes, so to make it easy for construction, I recommend, unless it's a really, really big wall, um, I recommend the same grid, but, but like I said, it's, it's, if you get that, that failure or the error saying it's not stable enough, yeah, you just go back into that thing and click, um, you click on a stronger, Grid, and I typically un unclick the uh, um, unclick the, uh, the the weaker grid that wasn't wasn't strong enough. Repeat how the download the software. So you can go to our website, um, and it's on the website under the Earth Retention section. Um, and just click on it. So basically, you click on Request Software. It comes to me. I send you an email describing how to download it, and I send you a, a link. Um, and then you download the software, and then you open the software, and then there's re you fill you get a, fill out a little form that is request um, the software. Um, yes, Dove and Order did um, write that program from us. What is recommend recommended setback for tiered walls? Once again, it's, it's basically going to be that seventy percent tie back. It can be long. It can be shorter. Or, or, or longer, depending on the surcharge of the wall. You have information about the reinforced gravity wall when there's a hurricane or storm surge. Yeah, I mean, when, when the walls are going to be around those type areas, um, even if they're small walls, a lot of times we still we design them as a GOF reinforced wall just to have them a little more beat. But we have a lot of walls um, against the seas that have been subjected to uh, hurricane storm surge. Um, Difference between the three different types of soil types. I guess that we have the foundation soil that the wall sits on, the reinforced soil, which is the area of the geoweb and the backfill. And then you have the, the back of the wall soil material. So what the reinforced slope comes against. Typical maintenance. Typical maintenance is just if it's vegetated, just make sure the vegetation is coming in. Most of the walls they just hydro seed them and, and let them. Um, naturally, naturally vegetating. All right, that looks like pretty much all of them. I guess I went past, went past um, noon in my area. So with that, I'll, I thank you once again. If you have any other questions, you know, please reach out. Here's my email, um, phone number. Um, Presto Geo is, is the website where you can download the uh, the Geo MSC program. So once again, thanks a lot and appreciate your time.